الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر له ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وسندنا وشفيعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم انما يتكبل الله من المتقين صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وارحم على عبدك ورسولك سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله واصحابه وذرياته اجمعين Alhamdulillah, we are on the night before Jum'ah, so in, <coughs> in our deen, Alhamdulillah, Jum'ah has started, and this itself is a very special night. For some people, they may be observing this as the 29th night, so it is both an odd night and a night before Jum'ah, and for others, it is the 28th night of Ramadan, and it means we have two to three days left only. So it's special in many ways, uh, but it's also special in the sense that we should feel this impending ending of the month of Ramadan. And it's the last chance, and many of us, as I think I may have even mentioned this in the beginning of the month of Ramadan, many of us are last-minute type people, right? Last-night uh, people. And so this is the end of Ramadan. So for those of us who quote-unquote work under pressure or leave deadlines until the end or pull the all-nighter, well, this is now we've entered that stage. Two to three days left in Ramadan, two to three nights and days left in Ramadan. For those whom this is the 29th night and this is the last odd night, and for those of us for whom it is the 28th night, it is still the last night before Jum'ah. So it is a very special night. In fact, uh, many people, I think, often forget that the night before Eid is also a very special night. So we have still a few more chances, right? All the way up to and including Salatul Eid until we return home. Uh, maybe I should mention that now because, yes, I think this is the last uh, English talk for the month. So in some ways, I would say that Ramadan... Obviously, Ramadan ends when Ramadan ends, but the extra blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in Ramadan, some of them spill over into the night of Eid, the morning of Eid, Eid Salah, after Eid Salah, when we rise and we come home. But by the time you come home, after praying Eid Salah, now you have to think, now it's all over. All right? And so between now and and the moment we return home after Eid Salah, this is the end game. This is the final chance. And before I really, you know, I would actually like to change the title of the topic. I can't change what you're looking at. But, you know, retaining taqwa after Ramadan has an assumption that we somehow attained taqwa in Ramadan. And so that would be nice if that was the way it worked. And when we had, the, if we, you know, give a talk at the start calling attaining taqwa in Ramadan... And then at the end, give a talk called Retaining Taqwa After Ramadan. I think the more the reality is rather struggling for Taqwa during Ramadan and continuing the struggle for Taqwa after Ramadan. And that is really actually what I want to talk about, is that Taqwa is a struggle. The real problem with us uh, was that we weren't making that struggle. Many of us were not making that struggle in earnest before the month of Ramadan. And one thing that Ramadan does to all of us, if nothing else, because the fast itself is a struggle, right? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That the purpose of fasting in Ramadan, uh, the purpose of the siyam, uh, right? Because that verse isn't about the month of Ramadan and its many other features. That verse is specifically about the siyam of the month of Ramadan, specifically about the psalm of the month of Ramadan, specifically about the fasting in the month of Ramadan. So the fasting itself is a struggle. So even if 
anyone feels, yeah, I didn't make so much effort in Ramadan, or maybe I didn't recite so much Quran, or I didn't make so much Dua, or this year I couldn't go to the Masjid, or this year I couldn't sit in Itikaf, or so many things, or I had so many plans when I started Ramadan, and now I find myself in this end game, and I haven't realized those plans. But there's definitely one thing, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, that all of us did do, and that was fasting in the month of Ramadan. That was the fast itself. So the fast was a struggle. And why were we fasting? So now if we can understand this, we were fasting in order to struggle to get taqwa. And the struggle has to continue after the month of Ramadan. Most of us are far from attaining taqwa, and therefore we're far from retaining taqwa. So Alhamdulillah, even just the act of fasting, even just the act of fasting was a struggle to acquire taqwa in this month. And that is something all of us, Alhamdulillah, with the karam and fazl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, were able to do. Now, that struggle has to continue. And the struggle itself is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, I repeat, we should remove all illusions except for maybe very few blessed mashallah people that we attained taqwa in Ramadan we somehow arrived taqwa and we want to retain it after Ramadan at the same time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said la'allakum tattakun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, who is more true than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qila in his statement so that also means that even if me and you may feel this about ourselves that no, I'm not yet a mutaki mu'min, but definitely, 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 just through the act of fasting, we have attained some amount of taqwa. Some amount of taqwa. may not be enough. There must be maybe much more left to do. As Allah Ta'ala has commanded in the Quran al-Kareem, Ya ayyuladzina amanu taqullaha haqqa tukati. Or another place Allah Ta'ala said, Mastata'tum. So make, adopt taqwa as much as you can, as much as you're able. Adopt taqwa as is Allah Ta'ala's right over you. We may not have reached that level of taqwa, but there is something, and all of us know this, that there is something we do gain in Ramadan. And a lot of us know this also, we lose that something after Ramadan. So maybe not full-fledged, outright, complete taqwa, but one can maybe phrase it this way, that retaining whatever you know, effort, struggling, striving, yearning for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reciting Qur'an al-Kareem, remorse over sins, feeling and compassion for the ummah, making dua for humanity, any and everything that we may have felt this month in Ramadan that we want to retain it after Ramadan. One of the things I was explaining uh, in the tafsir series, and I think it's worth mentioning here also, is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this term in Quran al sir and wa ma akfa, so rather than, you know, specifying this in a very particular, you know, technical way, the reality is that there are three aspects to a human being. The first is what we do openly, outwardly, in zahir, in qawl, in jahar, and amal. That is the manifestation of our self through action, through word, through deed. Then there's a second thing, which is our sir, which we keep secret, so that others don't know. That can be our thoughts and our feelings. 
Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows both. Allah ta'ala knows everything that we openly outwardly do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything that is in our sirr, everything that we conceal or that we do not reveal, which means our thoughts and feelings. But then there's a third thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in Quran al Kareem, wa ma akhfa, and that which is even more hidden than that. And the way to understand this is that there's some things about ourselves that mean you're not even aware of. It's not in our shu'ur, it's not in our conscious, right? You can call this our subconscious, our unconscious. So one aspect of taqwa is yes, we want outwardly to leave all sin. We want inwardly to leave all sin. وَذَرُوا ظَاهِرُ الْإِثْمِ وَبَاطِنَا As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands in Quran that leave all sin outwardly and inwardly. But what we also want is in our subconscious or if you want in our spiritual self, in our ruh, in our nafs, from the core of our being, we want also to leave sin. All right. Now understand this from another perspective, is that what do we gain in the month of Ramadan? So there are going to be some things that many are conscious of. So we actually, we can feel. Number one was our outward actions, right? The same three things. So the first is our outward actions. We stood, alhamdulillah, in Salatul Taraweeh. We outwardly fasted. We made more du'a, we recited more Qur'an, whatever a person is doing more outwardly, in deed, in action, charity, etc. Then there's a second thing that me and you would feel also is that our inner self, right, our batin, our sir, however you want to refer to it, and Allah tells refer to it in different ways in Qur'an al but our inner self that is not manifest to others, others cannot see this about us, but we can perceive this about ourselves, that yes, alhamdulillah, my heart is more inclined towards deen. Alhamdulillah. I do think more about Akhirah. In this month, this is the change that has happened. And then, yes, a third thing has happened in this month. And that is a change in our ruh. A change in our spiritual core. A change in the depth of our being. That mean you can't understand. That is only in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he says that he knows ma akhfa, what is even more hidden, what is most hidden. And it's there that we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought about this transformation of la allakum tattakun. And this is a dua we should make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Ya Allah, you know best what the effort, effects of fasting are on my ruh, on my qalb, on my spiritual heart, on my deen, on my iman. I'm not even aware of it. Ya Allah, ta'ala, I ask you to maximize those effects and let me not do anything after the month of Ramadan or indeed in these remaining two, three days and nights that will in any way minimize these effects because that's, that's what happens to us. So let's look at these three things again. After Ramadan, the problem is not that we leave the outward things. That's guaranteed to happen. There will be no more outward fasting. I mean, we can discuss the six fasts of Shawal inshallah a bit later, but there's not going to be an outward fard fast there's not going to be an outward sunnah mu'akkada salat al-tarawih. So the outward form is not going to be the same after Ramadan that it was inside Ramadan. So when we're talking about retaining, what are we really talking about? We're talking about the change that came inside of us that we are aware of. And secondly, that deep change that Allah Ta'ala brings about inside us that we're also we're even unaware of. That is Allah Ta'ala giving us tawfiq, Allah Ta'ala inspiring our heart, motivating our heart, turning our heart towards deen. And these are the two things that we don't want to lose after Ramadan. And again, these are the things that we end up, many of us, most of us, have actually lost all of them every year. Right? And, and this is why, in a sense, this is also why Ramadan is also special. Right? Because we find ourselves starting again from zero and then Alhamdulillah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Ramadan and it has so much mercy, so much rahmah, so much maghfirah, so much forgiveness. We're then again amazed. And every year we find ourselves in this position of the 28th, 29th night, the end game, end of Ramadan. And we feel this change. Even if no matter what anybody says, no, this year because of lockdown, pandemic, it wasn't the same. It's still an effect. I have to stress this, right? Because I do think some quarters have overemphasized how quote unquote different this year's Ramadan is. Well, in one sense, no, this year's Ramadan is exactly the same. In the sense that it's the same Ramadan, the same Rahmah, the same Barakah, the same Hidayah, the same Maghfirah, 
all of the features of Ramadan this year are the same that they were last year and previous years of your and my life. Nothing changes in Ramadan itself because of any illness or any global situation or any personal individual situation. Yes, it might be that due to you know cer- certain circumstances, many of us may not have outwardly done as it's just the zahir, it's just the manifest, right? It's just the mashud. It, we may have not outwardly done as much ibadah or not outwardly spent so much time in the masjid or outwardly spent itikaf, etc., etc. But the inward change, inshallah, inshallah, we should make dua to Allah Ta'ala and again strive hard in these remaining two, three days and nights. The inward change should still be the same. And that innermost change that is brought about by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la'allakum tattakun, we should have yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also spend the next few days, nights, begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that change should be the same. In fact, that change should be even more than it was in previous years. All right? Uh, and I, you know, Allah alam, but perhaps... Perhaps this year, if anything, it might actually be easier, inshallah, to retain any feelings or yearnings for deen that Allah Ta'ala blessed us with in Ramadan. It may actually be easier this year to retain that after Ramadan because of the situation, right? Because uh, many things will remain the same. In other words, Many people, alhamdulillah, in this month turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I think, more than usual. In their heart, again in their button, maybe not outwardly, but inwardly. Because of the situation, because of uncertainty, because of their anxiety. And well, that situation is going to stay after Ramadan. So it's quite possible that this Ramadan was more of an inner Ramadan and maybe less of an outer Ramadan. And perhaps, inshallah, that inner transformation can be more lasting for us, hmm? can continue more. But, as I said at the very start, it's very important that we continue that struggle. We continue that journey. So maybe, you know, I'm just retitling, I keep retitling the talk, but maybe we could call continuing the journey after Ramadan, right? Continuing the journey after Ramadan. No doubt... Uh, towards the end uh, the adab uh, that we learn from our deen is that whenever we're at approaching the end of any ibadah or after indeed we conclude an ibadah and it ends the number one we should make istighfar we should seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we should increase that now in other words this is a special type of istighfar yes we should make take advantage of the last few days and nights of ramadan to seek allah ta'ala's forgiveness for our sins our mistakes our shortcomings our failures our character flaws our personality uh, you know flaws but then there's another type of forgiveness that one should start doing towards the end and then after the end and is to ask allah ta'ala to forgive us for not valuing this month of ramadan for not doing as much as we could have, we might have, we should have, we wanted to, right? And to ask Allah Ta'ala to forgive us for all the nooks, uh, all the defects, and all the shortcomings, and all of the actions we did do. And to ask Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala out of His Rahmah to accept our Ramadan. Hmm? We should not take that for granted. It's part of us being a slave of Allah Ta'ala that we ask Him to accept Right? Like the famous incident Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Quran al-Kareem in Surah Al-Baqarah of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam after he erected once again the Kaaba, Baytullah, he made dua to Allah ta'ala, Rabbana takambal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Hmm? Now there's so many different ways and feelings and emotions with which a person could offer this dua. Certainly Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam offered it in his own way because he was Hanif and Siddiq and a Nabi and a Rasul and me and you may offer it in a different way. For example, Rabbana taqabbal minna that O our Rabb accept this month of Ramadan from us inna ka anta sami'ul alim that indeed you are the being who hears everything so you perceived all my outward failings and flaws this month and al-alim you know intimately all my inward failings and flaws and shortcomings this month but ya Allah I'm asking you out of your mahma and your mercy to accept this from me anyway accept the fast accept any recitations I made accept any du'as I made accept any salah I may have prayed 
So this is very important, this special type of istighfar, because it's it's actually weak, alerting our heart to a reality that kubuliya, kabul, is not guaranteed just by doing an action. Hmm? Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghani al-mustaghni. When Urdu, they, they call us benyaz. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free to accept or reject anybody's worship for any reason whatsoever, even without any reason whatsoever, for simply this, because n none of our ibadat can be up to his sha'an or up to his majesty or, or, according, or befitting his rank and his might and his splendor. So obviously none of us can say that we attained uh, or obtained any such standard in Ramadan that we are worthy of Allah Ta'ala accepting our Ramadan. No, we are unworthy. Hmm? We were unworthy that Allah Ta'ala sent Ramadan on us. We were unworthy uh, in our actions. But Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is all merciful. He's Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. So all unworthiness is irrelevant when it is presented in the presence of the infinite, limitless, endless mercy of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. So this is a, another very important thing to make this istighfar, to make du'a for kubuliya of uh, this month of Ramadan. And obviously to make du'a for taqwa. And we should be increasing, so maybe I can mention this as the second thing. So first is to make istighfar, second to make du'a for more kubuliya, third to make more and more du'a for taqwa. This is the mission. And that this mission should continue, as we've said, after this month of Ramadan. But especially the inner, the inner taqwa. That Allah Ta'ala bestow that upon us. And you know, sometimes we can turn to Allah Ta'ala and make du'as like that. And in this month, it wasn't just the outward act of fasting. There were inner things. Hunger was an inner feeling. Thirst was an inner feeling. And there may be many other things. Uh, a person had an inner yearning for Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. An inner, inward, batin, love for Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. All of these things we should present to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. That may Allah Ta'ala accept them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept them. And obviously, the most important aspect of taqwa, which is to leave disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Taqwa does not mean to fast and pray. Taqwa means to leave the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to leave all of that which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, the fasting and the praying helps us to do that, makes us stronger to do that, can motivate us to do that. But we still have to do that. And, and in some sense, I think that's another maybe hidden blessing, so to speak, of the current situation, is that many people will not be thrust back into the world when Ramadan ends. So for many people, sometimes it would be a very extreme situation. Let's say they spent 10 days sunnah itikaf in the masjid, and then after you know maybe one or two days of Eid, they have to go right back to work. And so it was an extreme change. And most people weren't able to handle that. And for many people then, in, within the month of Shawwal, they would say that, no, we've, we feel that we've lost the feelings we got in Ramadan, or we feel that we've lost that closeness. So now it's not going to be such a big change, because we were not in Sunnah Itagaf, so we didn't reach that extreme. And because of the global relative lockdown or absolute lockdown situation, most people will not be thrust full-fledged, full force back into the dunya. So it might be more manageable this year. This transition out of Ramadan actually may be, in some sense, more, uh, you know, more practical uh, this year around. And uh, this month of Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, was a tremendous blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A tremendous blessing from Allah Ta'ala and we cannot do, maybe many of us, we did Qadr of Ramadan itself. Just the fact that Ramadan exists and the fact that Allah Ta'ala kept us alive in a state of Iman in this month of Ramadan and the fact that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala gave us tawfiq to fast in this month of Ramadan. Just that fact itself for many of us, we learn to value and appreciate that more. So we should make dua to Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala enable us to value and appreciate everything in Deen. Quran al Kareem. The hidayat, talimat, uh, the teachings, the knowledge, the guidance in Quran. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The teachings and guidance in the sunnah of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because these are the two major things that connect a person to deen. 
It wasn't just an academic statement that Sayyidina Rasulullah Wasallam he said that I'm leaving behind two things. If you hold fast to them, right, you will be guided. That is the kitab and the sunnah. It's not just an academic statement to be talked about in usul al-fiqh class that the first two sources of Islamic law are the Quran and Sunnah. No, it's much more than that. It's a heartfelt spiritual attachment to Quran al-Karim and to the Sunnah. Our very iman, not just fiqh or you know Islamic law, our very iman has to be connected to these two beautiful, wondrous, amazing, miraculous uh, sources of knowledge the Qur'an the Kareem and the Sunnah of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu He accepted Islam. Why? On the basis of just accepting Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was one of the earliest, some say the earliest man after, you know, the earliest man period, the second person after. Umm al-Mu'mineen Sayyidina Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. And that was before, you know, hardly few verses of Quran were revealed. Sayyidina Umar, on the other hand, did not accept Islam on the basis of Sayyidina Rasulullah alone. And he was actually opposing Nabi Karim Wasallam. And as many of you would remember, he left his house with the intention to Nauzubillah kill, martyr Nabi Karim Wasallam. Then he was diverted, he went to his sister's home, right? And then he encountered Quran, Surah Taha. And when he encountered Quran, Surah Taha, because he encountered Quran, he had already encountered the Prophet ﷺ, he had not accepted Imam. He encountered Quran, that changed his heart, right? And that unveiled also uh, the reality of Sayyidina Rasulullah Wasallam. And then when he went, then he really saw the Prophet ﷺ for the first time, if you ask me. And so he, yes, the Quran Karim unlocked his perception, but then he also then witnessed uh, the Nur of Nabuwa, the true uh, you know, nur of Sayyidina Rasulullah Wasallam. So when the iman of the two greatest of the Sahaba, the two greatest Muslimin is based on Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and based on Quran Kareem, so it's our iman. Our iman. It's not just for fiqh class that we teach this thing, Quran and Sunnah. Our iman. And we should value these things more. Alhamdulillah, I think that many people uh, and, and that talk will be in Urdu tomorrow, but many people, alhamdulillah, in Ramadan, because it is the month of Qur'an, they learn to value the Qur'an more, but they don't complete the mission, and they don't learn to value the sunnah more. And these are both things that we have to value more, and continue that after Ramadan. This is the, this is the way to continue this journey of struggling for taqwa after Ramadan, is to keep diving deeper and deeper into Quran Kareem, into the Sunnah of Nabi Kareem, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this can be done lightly. It doesn't have to be done with outright full fledged tafsir, maybe even 10, 15, 20 minutes a day of recitation, of reflection, of learning something on Quran Kareem, 10, 15, 20 minutes a day, learning some hadith, learning some aspect of seerah, learning something more about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his noble and blessed companions, Sahaba Kiram, Radiallahu Ta'ala An Majma'in. But we have to keep going deeper, deeper into deen. So Ramadan basically wrenches us out of, 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 of us gone so deep into our dunya. And it connects us back to deen, focuses us back on akhirah, and most importantly, focuses us back on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the journey that has to continue. And all of that is uh, a means to taqwa. All of that is a path to taqwa. So, you know, maybe another way we can look at this is that Alhamdulillah, all of us in Ramadan, we get something, right? You can call it nur, fadl, karam, some light, some blessing, some mercy, some hidayah, some taqwa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The, the only question is that who is going to keep it? So the three options after Ramadan, you lose it, you keep it, retain it, or even you can gradually slowly but you keep increasing it so this is what we want actually we should not even be just thinking of retaining our niyat our dua to allah ta'ala and the remaining two three days and nights 
is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't want to just even retain this. I want to keep going. I want this journey of mine. You have brought me so far, alhamdulillah, in these 27, 28 days and nights. I want to keep going. Allah Akbar. And we should think like that. And everybody's own individual situation is different. But you, you should spend the next two, three days also thinking about this a little bit. That how will you keep going after Ramadan? And whatever plan you come up with, whatever steps you can conceive of to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these last two, three days and nights for those steps, for that plan. You know, I remember once a few years ago, you know, in, in, in a itikaf program, I gave this example of 72 hours, which I, which I think is a bit intense. Uh, and I said that, um, you know, the real, the test is that after Ramadan ends, most people, they will slip within 72 hours. And I give this example of an organ transplant or heart transplant operation and that they observe, right, for 72 hours to see. It's, it's a critical time of observation. You know, I'm not even sure 100% of the medical science is it really 72 hours. But I'm just, you know, giving you this as an example, right? Uh, and, and so the notion is that in Ramadan, it's like we got a heart transplant, Right? We got a new ruhani, spiritual qalb. And the question is that after Ramadan ends, it's our old self. And how long does the new heart last in our old self? Does it adjust and does it take over? Or is it, you know, within 72 hours we go back to being who we are? So here this is just one example, but the concept is there, right? Uh, the reality is that inshallah we all have a new heart and a new self, but... Uh, and I think this is one of, it's very important that we try, it won't be to the extent that we struggled in Ramadan, it won't be the amount of time we spent striving in Ramadan, but Shawwal is now a very important month for us. Ramadan is about to end very soon. So Shawwal is very important for us. And if we can somehow spend this coming month, next month, inshallah, of Shawwal, still turning to Allah Ta'ala, even struggling, even taking baby steps, even with that inclination, with that motivation, then inshallah, we will have continued that journey. So one of the things, uh, you know, and this is the spirit of the sunnah, when Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, he taught us, right? So I'm talking about the whole month now, I'm not talking about three days, I'm not talking about ten days in Shawwal, I'm talking about the whole month of Shawwal, so one of the things Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us is to fast six extra days in Shawwal. Now, for some people, you know, uh, sometimes I've encountered people when they, you know, this is a new teaching for them and they're just like, this is too intense, right? We are fasting in Ramadan and now this fellow is telling us it comes in Hadith that we're supposed to fast six days of Shawwal. So the first thing is that those six days, six, fasting six days of Shawwal is purely optional, all right? What I want to suggest tonight is that even if a person is not able to fast, just because they say, okay, I don't have the physical strength, even fasting Ramadan was so difficult for me, or it's very hot where I am, okay, no problem. Even if you cannot fast, still learn the lesson of this hadith. So the broader lesson of the hadith, first everybody should try, inshallah, inshallah, it's extremely valuable, right? And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa even gave an incredible reward that if a person... Uh, mentioned the incredible reward that if a person fasts the fard fast of the whole month of Ramadan and couples it with the sixth optional fast of Shawwal, it will be as if they fasted the whole year, right? So like if somebody says, right, that, oh, I wish Ramad all year could be Ramadan, or I wish all year I was the way I am in Ramadan, so then one should definitely try to fast the sixth fast in Shawwal, right? But let's say there's somebody who for whatever reason says, no, I just can't do it. Okay. I say, even if you can't fast six days in Shawwal, but look at the spirit of the hadith, is Nabi Kareem Sallallahu is basically also giving an instruction that the journey must continue, the struggle must continue, the striving must continue. So if you can't keep fasting, then try to do something else. For example, okay, I will, at least six days in Shawwal, I will read as much Quran as I used to read in a normal day of Ramadan. Or I will give charity. Or I will, you know, do try to continue something. If I can't continue the physical fast, if I can't observe the physical fast because of health, because of any issue, right, in the month of Shawwal, then can I wake up for tahajjud, 
I won't fast, so I don't have to eat suhoor. But can I wake up for Taj at least six days in Shabal? Can I make dua at Taj at least six days in Shabal? Can I make dua to Allah Ta'ala before Maghrib six days in Shabal? Can I pray maybe even just two rakats, not 20 rakats of taraweeh, that doesn't exist in Shawal? Can I pray two extra rakats of salah at night in the month of Shawal, at least for six days? So just think like that, make a plan. I'm just giving you examples. Everybody should not think about their own situation, their own you know, ab- availability, their own ability, and make dua to Allah subhanahu ta'ala. Make dua to Allah subhanahu ta'ala. And those who can, alhamdulillah, mashallah, fast, then they should definitely try to fast those six days. You know, and ulama have had different positions about this. Some ulama felt it's better to fast the six fasts of shawal immediately. I mean, obviously not on one shawal because that's Eid, and it's on a day where it's permitted to fast, but from two, two, three, four, five, six, seven shawal. Others ulama felt it's better to space them, space the six fasts out, and if you can, Try to do them on Mondays and Thursdays or and or the 13th, 14th, 15th of the month. So you get, you know, you combine multiple, as they say, fadail, uh, multiple virtues and merits in these six fasts. And I've also observed the very practical benefit of spreading out the six fasts is if you use one of those six fasts in Shawal to try to reconnect yourself to the feelings of Ramadan. And you, you do one fast like that, then maybe after a few days again we slip inside, then again do another fast, then again we slip inside, then you, again you do another fast. And then if you, you know, drag this out and s- sort of spread it out rather across Shawal, then inshallah by the end of Shawal uh, we will, you know, uh, have, have worked on this concept of continuing the journey, right? So some of you may be shocked that this fellow is talking about Shawal and we're still in Ramadan. But this is what Muslims have to do. We have to be more forward thinking. We have to be more proactive. We need to plan ahead, look ahead, be prepared in advance. right? And me and you weren't that good about it. When it came to Ramadan and Shaban, most of us were struggling. And basically then Ramadan just came and landed on us. right? Maybe for many people because you know many situations they were in. Okay, so now we need to think. Because whether, you know, there's not the one absolute reality I can tell you is Ramadan is leaving. And Ramadan is leaving fast. And there's nothing mean you can do to slow it down. There's nothing mean you can do to make it stay an extra day or two. Hmm? There's nothing we can do. Allah Akbar. And, you know, as I, th- I, as I said earlier in the series this month, that, you know, be- none of us re- none of us ever knew whether we were going to be alive for another Ramadan. But this year, I think it's even more true. You know, for all of us, that there's always a chance we're going to die and everybody's going to die at the appointed and decreed time that is known only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But outwardly, apparently, the chances of dying have gone up a little bit, right? So because of that, uh, Allah alam, how many of us will be truly, how many of us will really be here uh, next year in Ramadan? And so we should then think that, okay, the next two, three days and nights, let's say this really is my last Ramadan. So this is not just my last chance this year. This is my last chance ever. Allahu Akbar Kabeerah. Then when a person thinks like that, they're not going to look as an odd night or even night. They're not going to be thinking, oh, it's the 28th, it's not the 27th or 29th. No, no, no. They say every night is precious to them. Every night. You know, and that was really the adab and the way of the Salihin and Siddiqeen that they would... All ten nights they would spend like it was the Ilzul Qadr, right? And we, you know, because we're weak, then we focus on the five odd nights, or some of us even just focus on the 27th and 29th. Uh, but whatever time is left, and it's not just the night, in the daytime also. I think also this is something I want to mention. It's a little bit late. I wish I had thought of this myself and also shared it with all of you earlier. I think when we put so much emphasis on the nights of Ramadan, which no doubt is there, I think some of us, we lose the understanding of the importance of the days. So much so that some people just slack in the daytime or they, you know, do fudu, lag, they in, you know, involve themselves in futile acts in the daytime, thinking that, no, it's the night, you know, when night comes in to do ibadah. Don't, the days of Ramadan are also incredible. The days of Ramadan are extremely valuable, Right? Uh, and then you know, and then what's going to happen? You may just even you may even feel tired at night. You may feel tired in the day. Don't look at now. It's three days, but seventy-two hours left, for, depending on where you are, right? 
Don't look at day and night now. Don't look is it odd night, is it even night. Don't look at is it night, is it day. Don't look is it Juma? is it a regular day. It's Ramadan. Alright. Even if it's a Wednesday daytime, it's Ramadan. It's Ramadan. Every lamha, every moment, every second of Ramadan. This is, it's, it's slipping away from us. It's fleeting away. Hmm? Just think, go back to what I said in the beginning. The hadith of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi But the night before Eid, that's not even Ramadan. Right? It's not an odd night. Last ten nights is Shabal. Right? The morning of Eid Salah. Eid Salah itself. Until you come home. Every moment now counts. Every moment. And you know, there'd be some of us, uh, you know, who, for whatever reason, you, you'd be surprised. Uh, there are many people who actually can do more ibadah in the day than the night. For whatever reason, maybe they get tired at night or whatever it is. Do not underestimate the days. Don't let the days slip away. Very few days. And you know, one of the things, there's one fadila, by the way, I should mention. There is one way in which the days are superior to the night. What is that? That is, in the daytime, we are in halat asom. We are actually fasting, right? We are in a state of hunger and thirst. And that's not there in the nights. In the nights, we're eating and drinking, right? And we can sip water, and we can sip water and every, you know, after every page of tilawah. So there's one thing that we can do in the day that we can't do in the night, is do ibadah in a state of hunger, in a state of thirst. That itself is to make the days valuable. Remember the saying of Sayyidina Ali, Allah ta'ala anu wa karamallahu watch. What? He said, there's most beloved to me that I would make jihad fi sabilallah in a hot summer day in a state of fasting. Hmm? Allahu Akbar. I want to do it in the daytime in the state of fasting. So this is a very special thing about the days. So don't leave all your ibadat for night. Yes, okay, if somebody, you know, is still... Uh, you know, unfortunately, but, you know, they may have worldly duties that they have to attend to, work and earning and, you know, etc. Uh, then so be it. Then maybe they don't have the time in the day. But for those of us who, mashallah, are off, so to speak, right? And we're equally free in the days and the nights. Do not underestimate the days. Do not underestimate the days. So what what is this? So what I'm trying to do is rekindle in our heart for these last few days, but also to continue the journey after Ramadan, is that talab, talab, that urge, that yearning, that desire, that seeking. This is the mo- this is the, actually the real valuable thing that a person gets in Ramadan. This is the real gift from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also a dua we should make. That Yalla increase us in our talab, increase us this thirst, this you know this thirst hirs. Uh, this unquenchable thirst, insatiable desire, Ya Allah, that I feel coming in my heart, that I want to just maximize these last three days and nights. Ya Allah, make that, make that my feeling about my whole life. I want to maximize my whole life until I enter the qabr, until I enter my grave, doing a'mal al doing virtuous deeds, righteous actions. It's not just I'm in for the long game, it's not just three days and three nights that are left. So we should make dua to Allah, to Allah for a lot of talab. And that's the real way to continue the journey afterwards is to keep maintaining that talab and persisting in that talab. And we are, we, this is our life, we are talib. It's not just talib of ilm. Yes, we are seekers of knowledge. We're talib of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're talib of sirat al-mustaqeem. We're talib of akhira. We're talib of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah, of his maghfira. So this talab has to continue. This talab has to continue. <sighs> And this is the beautiful thing that happens in deen, not just in Ramadan, but, you know, we are talib, right? And Allah Ta'ala is our matloob. So it doesn't mean that we are seekers and Allah Subh'ala Ta'ala is, the, is what we seek, right? But in another sense, we are also matloob and murad of Allah Subh'ala Ta'ala. What does that mean? That Allah Ta'ala has sought us out by decreeing and choosing us for Iman by giving us the strength to fast in Ramadan by giving us the tawfiq to sit with one another and remember him and try to advise one another on deen so we are talib and we are also matloob we are murid and we are also murad we are muhib and we are mahboob this is the beautiful symbiotic symmetrical two way relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the real thing that we feel in Ramadan and that's kind of this all training of night and day as well. 
right? You can even imagine like that, that we're talib of Allah Ta'ala in the day by fasting, seeking his obedience, and we hope that we become his matloob at night, that he showers his rahmah and mercy and maghfra and forgiveness on us at night. So this is the life. It's not just Ramadan, this is life. Ya Allah, we want to spend our whole life like this. That we are talib and we are matloob, that we are murid and we are murad, that we are muhib and we are mahboob. That we're all our life is seeking you, and all our life we want to be sought by you. Radiyatam mardiyya. Hmm? That we are pleased with you and you are pleased with us. Yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbunahu. They love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them. Yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbunahu. Allah ta'ala, He loves them and they love Him. Muhib and mahboob. Hmm? Radiyatam mardiyya. This is what deen is. This is what deen is. And this is something, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, that we feel in the month of Ramadan. This is what we want to keep feeling. So when we when we get up at the Hajjud in Shawal, or even if you can't get up at the Hajjud, you, you make dua after Isha, after Maghrib, at any time in the day, in the night, you are talib. This is a very important thing. Don't focus on schedule. Maybe some of us cannot present ourselves at the best of times. Maybe some of us cannot wake up for the Hajjud. Maybe some of us cannot, you know, take time out from Asr to Maghrib because they're busy working. All you have to do is present yourself at any time in 24 hours with talab to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With talab to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. Hmm? And this talab for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to become a ghalib. Ghalib means it has to uh, you know, dominate us. It has to overpower and overwhelm all other feelings of talab. It, it, and, and you see that. So we also experience this in Ramadan. Then Ramadan, alhamdulillah, because a person's heart is oriented towards Allah Ta'ala, seeking Allah Ta'ala, we're not seeking the dunya, right? Alhamdulillah, Allah Hualam, I don't know, but I would, most people in the month of Ramadan aren't thinking about dunya, seeking the dunya, planning their next career, planning car, planning house, right? Why? This person who was like that before, even to the permissible extent, because it's a natural thing that when in our heart the talab for Allah Ta'ala increases, it becomes a ghalib. It overwhelms us. And the first thing it overwhelms, which is, an, which is a great blessing, is it overwhelms and supersedes, right? Our talab for dunya, our talab for ghairullah, our talab for anything, for name, for fame, for a person, for worldly for goods, for material things, for progress, for anything. So this is something we learned in Ramadan. And this, this is a lesson has to continue. Otherwise, if we don't keep up that talab for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's very easy to fall back and end up as a talab of the dunya again, to be talab of ghair again, to be seeking, you know, all types of things other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this talab, this talab, right? I always remember, you know, the talab, you know, that hadith in Sahih Muslim uh, where there was that person in an earlier community, uh, Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sometimes Allah Ta'ala revealed to him stories. I, I want to comment on this a little bit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to reveal to Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that's in Quranic revelation, stories of about previous anbiya, right? Hal ataka hadith Musa, etc. And in hadith, you find that Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, that Allah Ta'ala revealed to him stories not of the Anbiya of the previous Ummas, but of the Salihin and Siddiqeen, of the pious seekers of Allah Ta'ala, Talibin, hmm? in the previous Ummas. So one, you know, which we did, you know, several times and beyond several years ago, a very long, a very important hadith narrated by Imam Muslim Ramadan as Sahih about the person who killed 99 people, right? Some of you may remember this. And so he went, uh, and he, then after killing 99 people, Allah Ta'ala inspired his heart to make tawbah. Allah Akbar. Now what, now look, this is what I'm talab comes ghalib on him. This desire, this talab, this desire, this talab in his heart came ghalib, overwhelmed him. It changed him. He's no longer a killer, right? Okay, so he's now seeking and learning and he goes to a rahib or goes to a monk and asks them and tells him that, okay, you know, I've committed these 99 murders and what can I do? And I'm just paraphrasing because I don't have the hadith in front of me right now. I'm just remembering it. So I'm just giving you the meaning. Uh, 
And so the monk tells him, no, there's nothing after hearing him, there's nothing you can do, right? He's a Sufi monk guy, right? He'd probably get terrified, this guy's a serial killer. He said, no, no, there's nothing you can do, no toba for you. So the, he gets angry and he kills him also. Allah Akbar. But, you know, the ulama, when they comment on the Siddiq, you know, they, they talk, some of them, they talk about this, that this hundredth murder was different. This hundredth murder was done in a ghalaba of talab. So I'm just using those words, right? Okay, and then he goes to another person who is an alim, right? And because that person has ilm of deen, so he tells him, yes, yes, what you have to do is you have to go uh, to this particular area, kada wa kada, go to the settlement of these such and such people, go to such and such place where such and such people are, and... You have to make ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with them. فَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مَعَهُمْ This was the words that you should worship Allah ta'ala with them and uh, your tawbah will be accepted. So then he goes and he sets forth for that place. So this is a talab, right? This is a talab. He had nothing else, he had not interest in anything else in his life now. His only mission was to do tawbah. So what we want is the basic talab of Tawbah, yes. But remember at a more fundamental level, what did we say? Talab of Iman. Talab of Taqwa. Talab of Hidayah. Hmm? And yes, we definitely part of that talab is that we have to make Tawbah. But we want to keep increasing, keep increasing. Like we keep making Dua to Allah, Allah, Ehdina, Ehdina Sirat Mustaqim. We want more Hidayah, more Hidayah. Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala gave us so much hidayah in this month of Ramadan. This is a lot to make sugar to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala gave us so much hidayah in this month of Ramadan. Hmm? Did He grant us hidayah to fast? He grant us hidayah to pray? He grant us hidayah to read or study Qur'an al-Kareem? He grant us hidayah to make dua to Him? Hmm? And you know another famous story, right, of Talab, that we used to sometimes talk about Talab for hidayah. If we now I think about that, Sayyidina Salman al-Farsi, who again long story in hadith which he narrates himself right sort of autobiographical autobiographical ajeeb talab hmm? going from one you know for himself being born in, in Farsi with the Zoroastrian religion then accepting the religion that he knew at that time at least to be true before you know Islam so like this Christianity and then going to one Christian monk and one Christian monk and one Christian monk and then finally coming he finding out about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then showing up, you know, Allah Akbar, Ajib, Talab, 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 and the Talab comes ghalib on a person, nothing else, Imam Ghazali Matala had Talab for Yaqeen in his life, right? Once he had Talab for Yaqeen, he left, he left his position, he left his teaching, he went to Baitul Muqaddas, he went to Makkah Makarama, Medina Manawra, Hajj, and he just had Talab. Hmm? And that Talab remained ghalib on him his whole life, and when he returned, he wrote, Ihya ulumuddin, Allah Akbar Kabira. This is talab, talab, talab. So this is what we really want. This is what we want to continue. This is our journey. And we have a few days and nights, precious moments left to use the barakat and blessings of Ramadan to build that talab, to increase that talab. So we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us successful in this. May Allah Ta'ala grant us the himma and strength and the tawfiq and ability to maximize as much as we can these remaining moments, days and nights and the night before Eid and the morning of Eid and going to Salat al-Eid and returning to our homes. And may Allah Ta'ala enable this journey to continue even after that throughout the month of Shawwal, throughout the rest of the coming year, throughout the rest of the life, all the way up till when we enter, when we die and enter our grave, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us talibin wa akhirun da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen make dua subhanahu rabbil ala wahab Allahumma salli ala sayyiduna Muhammad wa ala ala sayyiduna Muhammad wa mubarak wa sallim Rabbana dhanamna anfusana wa illam takfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna man al-khasirin Rabbi gfir warham wa anta khairul rahimin Ya Allah ya Rabbi kareem 
Rest that you forgive us for all our failings, all our shortcomings. Forgive us for not valuing Ramadan as we should have. Forgive us for not worshipping you as much as we could have. Yet in Bikram, it is your karam and fuzzal on us that you give us tawfiq and blessing to fast in this month, to pray in this month, to gather from time to time in your zikr and your remembrance. Yet in Bikram, we need more, Ya Rab. We need mazid, Ya Rab. We need istikama, Ya Rab. We need steadfastness and perseverance, Ya Rab. Ya Rab, Bikram can keep us on this rata mustaqim. Guide us in Surat Al-Mustaqeem. Bring us further into Surat Al-Mustaqeem. Enable us to do Amal Al-Udkhulu Fi Silmi Kafa. Make us enter the deen sincerely, Ya Rab. Make us enter the deen sufficiently, Ya Rab. Give us tawfiq to enter the deen completely, Ya Rab. Let us never be slack in deen. Let us never be lazy in deen. Let us never be negligent in deen. Make us strong and steadfast in deen, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Ya Allah, we are worried, Ya Rab, that when the month of Ramadan leaves, we will be back to our own selves, back to our own own routines, back to our own schedules, we'll fall back into ghafla yun bikreen without the barak of the fast, without the barak of taraweeh, without the barak of lil taqadr, we have no hope in our standing, but Ya Rabbi Kareem, we turn to you and your rahmah, we turn to you and your karam, we turn to you and your fadl, you are wallahu dhu fadlan adheem, wallahu dhu fadlan ala mu'mineen, you are the being of tremendous bounty and grace, and the being who sends that tremendous bounty on the mu'mineen, Allah, on this night we ask for you, from you, your rahmah Ya Allah, your maghfra Ya Allah, your fadl Ya Allah, your karam Ya Allah, your radha Ya Allah, your muhabba Ya Allah, your mahbubiya Ya Allah, Allah, Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you grant us la'allakum tattakoon, increase us in our taqwa, Ya Rabbi Kareem, make us from the muttaqeen, mu'mineen, salihin, mu'mineen, mukhlisin, mukhlisin, mu'mineen, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi Kareem, increase us in our yaqeen and our iman, increase us in our following of hidayah, increase us in our ilm, our knowledge of deen, increase us in our amal, our practice of deen, make us better at reciting Quran, make us better at understanding Quran, make us better at reflecting upon Quran, make us better in practicing Quran increase our hearts and our minds with the knowledge of the sunnah of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam give us a passion for the sunnah a craze for the sunnah grant us amal upon the sunnah grant us the akhlaq of the sunnah grant us the adab of the sunnah grant us the ahwal of the sunnah grant us the sifat of the sunnah Ya Rabbi Kareem connect our hearts and our ruh and our mind to the Quran and sunnah Ya Rabbi Kareem Ya Allah we ask that you Send more of Hidayah and more of your Rahmah on our Batin, Ya Rab, on our Sir, Ya Rab, on our Ruh, Ya Rab, on our Akhfa, Ya Rab. Ya Allah, we ask that you transform our hearts, transform our subconscious selves, fill our hearts and permeate our beings with a yearning for you, a desire for you. Make us ever and always seekers of you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, for so much of our life, we have sought other than you, depended on other than you, relied on other than you, hoped for the appreciation or praise or love of other than you, Ya Rabbi, make Toba from all of that, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Now it is only and only you, Ya Rabbi. We want to be pleasing to you. We want you to be radi with us. We want you to be happy with us. We want you to guide us. We want you to nurture us. You are our Rabbi Kareem. You are our Mawla, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you guide us and nurture us. Protect us and ya forgive us. Ya Rabbi, send your mercy and rahmah and karam upon us. Ya Rabbi, make us steadfast on deen. Ya Rabbi Kareem, make us good members of the Ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Rabbi Kareem Ya Rabbi make dua for the whole Ummah Ya Rabbi for the Muslimin Mutathirin for those who are poor oppressed downtrodden destitute needy afflicted Ya Rabbi Kareem we make dua for those who are far from you distant from you who have been deluded and entrapped by some false ideology or have been deluded and entrapped by their nafs or shaitan Ya Rabbi Kareem ask that you rescue them Ya Rabbi guide them again towards you free them from the chains of these false ideologies ideologies and Ya Rabbi Kareem grant them the nur of your hidayah from the nur of your rahmah from the nur of your karam Ya Rabbi Kareem Ya Rabbi make dua for the youth of the Ummah Ya Rabbi make them strong on deen make them steadfast on deen we make dua Ya Rabbi for all of insan Ya Rabbi send your hidayah on insan send your guidance on insan accept them from iman Ya Rabbi make dua for all of insan who are muslimin and mutaasirin for the poor and destitute and downtrodden and oppressed Ya Rabbi I said you rescue them from their injustice, show them the light of Islam, show them the nur of Hidayah, Ya Rabbi Kareem send people in their lives who will help them and guide them to deen, who will connect them to you Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Rabbi ask that you bless Ya Rabbi and accept all the wonderful 
علماء الدين شيوخ الدين دعاة الدين Talibin of Deen, you will send your rahmah on them, your kubuli on them, especially those who have passed away in this month, that you raise them up to you. Ya Rabbi Karim, it is a sign of the end of time. Ya Rabbi Karim, have mercy on us. Let us value those who remain with us. Keep us in the shade of the Siddiqeen and Salihin and Muttaqeen, Ya Rabbi Karim. Ya Allah, we ask that you accept all the du'as of all of the hearts and tongues. Ya Rabbi Karim, we ask that you accept the pious du'as and those that are in our haq, Ya Rabbi Karim. Ya Allah, if on these nights of Ramadan, if anyone in the history of this ummah or any of all the history of Mu'mineen ever made du'a to you that was pleasing to you, Met Ya Rabbi Karim, it is munasib, inappropriate for us. Ya Rabbi, ask the same du'as from you. And Ya Rabbi, ask from you every khair, every good that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa asked of you. And we seek refuge in every shar and every evil that Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sought refuge from. Ya Rabbi, ask that you grant refuge to us from the fitna of Dajjal, from the fitna of the end of times, from the fitna of corruption, from the fitna of oppression, from the fitna of injustice, from the fitna of sins, from the fitna of enmities, from the fitna of hatreds, from the fitna of unlawful lust, from the fitna of unlawful greed, from the fitna of materialism, from the fitna of false ideologies, from the fitna of self-delusion and self-deception. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you grant us Haq, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Keep us on the path of Haq. Make us seekers of Haq. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask that you soften our hearts. Put peace and love and harmony between the hearts. Put tenderness and affection between the hearts. Make us Ra'uf and Rahim with one another in the same way that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Ra'uf and Rahim with this Ummah. Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi Kareem. Ya Allah, we ask that you accept our Ramadan. Grant us your Kubuliya. Grant us your Rahmah. Grant us your Maghfira. And Ya Rabbi, in the remaining few days and nights, Ya let us drive harder let us end on a good note let us make up for the time that we lost and let us continue this journey of this month of ended Rabbana takabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim wa tubu alayna innaka anta tawab rahim wa sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin